Hello, YouTube. Coming at you today with a little chest and back. And, uh, you know, I'll start out with what we did for chest. We just did uh, two sets of this incline press. And uh, I really like this Atlantis machine. I've kind of used it on and off since I started going to this gym. But in my opinion, probably the best incline machine I've ever used. But, you know, you want to do other machines sometimes, but I would say this is the most solid one I've used for sure. But anyway, we did two sets of that. Uh, one set of a plate-loaded upper chest fly. Uh, two sets of a machine flat press. One set of pec deck. And then one set of a lower chest fly. And, yeah, as usual pretty good made some progress but uh i also kind of want to talk today about exercise selection and basically how to kind of program your workouts so you know i feel like if you want something to grow more obviously you should put it like further ahead in your workout so let's, uh, let's do what I'm doing right now, for example. Say you have a chest and back day. I have chest first because right now I kind of want to grow my chest a little more than my back. That's not saying I don't want to grow my back. That's just saying, you know, I'm, I'd rather my chest grow a little more than my back grow that little bit more from having it at the beginning of the workout versus the, you know, uh, second half. And, uh, I, you know, chest is, so it's more complicated than some people think and a lot less complicated than other people think. Because, basically, I would say, you know, you have the, uh, I can't remember the exact muscle names, but you have your upper and your lower chest and those are two separate muscles it's like uh, i want to say like clavicular head is the upper and like costal is the costal head is what most people would call like their mid and lower chest and then there's actually more of an underlying muscle called the pec minor i believe that goes a little bit more up and down as opposed to where the rest of your chest is kind of going horizontal. It's not completely up and down, but more to that angle. And, you know, people say there's no reason, you know, this is kind of actually something I hear in the, you know, more science-based community is uh, they'll kind of say there's no reason to really do any lower chest exercises and to that I definitely disagree and when I say lower chest exercises I mean stuff like decline presses and decline flies because they say you know oh your chest will grow just from flat presses you know, enough you don't you don't need any decline work It'll, it works your lower chest enough and to that I say, I disagree. Because anybody, anybody you ask, uh, they will tell you if they do a decline fly, they're going to feel it in those lower pec fibers as opposed to the mid-chest fibers. Because while it is technically one muscle, that uh, pec costal, I believe it's called, the mid and lower chest, what most people would consider, well, it's, it's technically one muscle, you can definitely bias the mid and lower fibers of that muscle. Just because they're technically the same muscle doesn't mean you can not bias them. And then, I feel like you also want some kind of decline movement because of that pec minor muscle I mentioned earlier. I'm, as far as I believe, you know, my knowledge goes, I believe... That is kind of how that underlying muscle has worked. Well, you know, it's not a big muscle, and 
I'm sure it works during a lot of other exercises. It is a muscle and, you know, you should, you know, train a little, I guess. But yeah, you're going to get some of that pec minor work when you do stuff like decline flies or presses. Because it's more, well, it's not like a completely vertical angle most of the time. It lines up with those fibers pretty well. So I think it's good to include some lower chest exercises like some decline. But, you know, you don't really need to prioritize them. And I say that because, uh, let me ask you a question. If you're looking at someone's chest, have you ever seen someone and thought, man, their upper chest just dwarfs their lower chest? I've never, I've never seen that. <laughs> but you do have some cases where you look at someone and say, oh, they, they, they need to work on some upper chest. You know, it looks like their pec is kind of sagging almost. Uh, a good example of this is uh, Larry Wheels, I, I would say. He has a, don't get me wrong, he has a huge chest. But his lower chest definitely just kind of is a, it has a lot more size compared to that upper chest. And in a bodybuilding context, at least, that's not really what you want. So... I would say prioritize upper chest work and then, you know, cause you will get some, some of those lower chest fibers activated during, uh, flat presses. I would say move on to flat movements next where you're, you're kind of more biasing that mid chest area and then maybe throwing a little decline stuff at the end just to really but you know, you want to bias each head at least, but it's uh the lower chest gets a decent amount of work from the other exercises already, but I do think it still needs that biased exercise to most efficiently grow, I guess. So yeah, that's why, you know, in every video you kind of see me doing all my inclines first, all my mid stuff first, and then maybe a one or two sets of a lower exercise. And yeah, it's been working pretty good. As you can see, oh yeah, uh, I forgot. I wasn't really looking at the screen while I was talking, but I, I had a killer sunburn during this video. <laughs> like, yeah, it was bad, man. If you saw me with my abs there, I, the way I was sitting, I guess, literally kind of burned some ab lines in me. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, anyway, on to back. Uh, I just did two sets of this more mid-back biased row. And then I did one set of uh, neutral grip pull downs, two sets of lat pullovers, and then one set of an upper back row, and then one set of more of an upper lat row. And that's all I did for back. Seven sets total for chest, and then seven sets total for back. So, yeah, not a ton of volume, but, you know, that's the way I have found works best for me. And, and, you know, if you're able to work intensely and really train hard, I would suggest it to you as well. Because a lot of people just, to put it simply, overtrain. They don't give their body enough rest, and they tend to just throw a lot of junk volume in there which is something I was definitely guilty of in my earlier years of lifting was junk volume. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I would basically, you know, I was always told the harder you work, you know, the more results you're going to get. So I would just pretty much stay in the gym as long as I could take it every day. <laughs> you know, I'd probably be there three or four hours, like constant lifting. Like I, and I wouldn't take too long of breaks between sets either. So, yeah, I would do, oh man. And let's say in a given workout, I'd probably do 30 plus sets if I just had to guess. And that was just on a normal day. I, and I would do that six days a week. And, uh, you know, it worked in the beginning because you know, when you're a new lifter, 
quite literally anything will work. <laughs> but once I kind of got out of that newbie gain phase, uh, progress pretty much just halted. And, you know, I, I kind of continued training like that for about a year. And I saw very little progress during that whole year. And, you know, I kind of realized I had to change something. Probably should have realized a little er earlier, but I didn't really track can I didn't really track my stuff back then either. So uh, I was just kind of pushing whatever weight I felt like for that day. <laughs> so yeah, we changed it up, started doing super low volume, even lower than I do now, and I actually started making progress again. And then you know we kind of experimented with a bit higher volume again, not quite as high as like that newbie stage, but higher volume than I do now. And I've kind of tried in the, those different ranges. And I've found for me about, it depends on the muscle, but four to seven working sets a week is pretty good for me. I found that to be pretty ideal. And it just kind of depends on the muscle, how many sets that, you know, you really want to do. Because I've found for stuff like rear delts, you know, four to five sets has worked better for rear delts in my, for me. But stuff like chest and back that are a bit more complicated muscles with a lot of different ways to bias different parts of that, you know, your chest or your back. I've found a bit more sets, like around seven kind of works for me. And then, you know, you have the kind of muscles that are a little more complicated, but, you know, they're not as complicated as, like, your back or something. Like, uh, let's say biceps, for example. There's basically three muscles in what most people consider your bicep. You have the short head and the long head of your bicep, which is, that's the, your actual bicep muscle. But then you also have your brachialis, which most people consider part of your bicep because, you know, you're going to work it on bicep days. It's, it's also worked with curls just in a neutral position as opposed to supinated. So, yeah, I do two, I, I do two sets of a more long head biased exercise and two sets of a more short head biased exercise and then two sets of a brachialis bias. And I found that to work really good for biceps and triceps. I, you know, pretty similar approach. I would do more of a short head bias, more of a long head bias, and then either, you know, or sorry, two sets for each of those. And then either two sets of a more medial head biased or one that just kind of hits all three, you know. And yeah, that's kind of how I, I've been doing it. You, with volume, you just kind of got to experiment a little bit and find what works for you. But I feel like the rep, or sorry, the set ranges I use is, you know, a pretty good you know, general rule of thumb, I would say. But anyway, yeah, you can see my burn again there. Oh, man, <laughs> look like a tomato. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I've always burned easy, man. Uh, I'm a, a pale guy. <laughs> I do not do well in the sun, which sucks because you know, I work outside a lot. <laughs> but it's whatever sunscreen's a thing and I am very grateful for it <laughs> but yeah we're just uh practicing posing a bit more trying to get better at that because you know whenever I do a show posing's a very important part of that obviously so I kind of need to get that down <laughs> but we're slowly improving uh posing is one of those things that kind of takes me a bit more time to get used to than other things in lifting, I would say. Just because there's so many little things that go into it that can make big differences. Like, for example, in, in most side poses, 
for the longest time, I didn't know you were supposed to kind of squash your hamstring against your uh, other quad. And, oh man, it makes your leg look so much bigger in those poses. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I would just kind of lift my leg up and have it sitting there. Because I saw people have their leg up like that. But I didn't know that they were, I didn't know they were like doing that thing with their hamstring. I, I just thought I had really small hamstrings. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I guess it's good because then I am, you know, improved my hamstrings more. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like this video if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate that. It uh, really helps out, you know, getting views and stuff. But anyway, see ya.